Hello and welcome! Today we're talking about the Insta360 X4 and the topic is overheating. How big an issue is it? Is it even an issue at all? Well, let's try to find out. So this is a follow-up to my last video in which I looked at battery life and charging on the Insta360 X4, and during my testing I did actually experience a couple of instances where the camera shut down due to overheating. So I figured this would be a good topic to look at in more detail. We'll talk about what is overheating, we'll look at what circumstances and conditions you're likely to experience overheating, and we'll also look at some of the things that you can do in order to avoid or at least minimize the possibility of overheating. So there's a lot to cover here today, so as usual I'll place the chapters up here and on the video timeline. And before we get into it, very importantly, this video is not sponsored, paid for, or influenced in any way. All of the equipment was purchased with my own money and the opinions are entirely my own. So let's get on with it. So let's start out by clarifying what it is we mean when we're talking about overheating. So when your camera is recording video, it's going to generate heat inside the camera. And the harder your camera is working, the more heat it's going to generate. Now, if the internal electronics of the camera get too hot, there is a safety feature inside your camera that will stop the recording and shut down the camera, preventing the internal circuitry from getting too hot and causing permanent damage to the camera itself. So even though this can be frustrating, you want your camera to shut down in the case of overheating. Now, how hot the camera gets is going to depend on how hard you're making it work. So in the case of the X4, if you're recording at 8K resolution, that's going to get hotter than recording at 5.7K. If you're recording at 60 frames per second, it's going to get hotter than at 30 frames per second. And if you're recording at a higher bitrate, it's storing more information to the card with each frame, so again that's going to contribute to the heat that's generated inside the camera. Now, what makes this even more challenging in the case of the X4 is, first of all, you have an extremely compact camera, and secondly, this thing is sealed in order to be waterproof. So the only way to dissipate the heat is through the body of the camera itself. And I think you'll find that this is why we also have this new design on the front of the X4 with these ribs. This is not about aesthetics or being able to hold on to the camera better. This is done in order to increase the surface area of the front of the camera to help with heat dissipation. And when you're working the camera hard, heat dissipation is going to be the key to being able to record as long as possible. So, what recording modes then are working the camera the hardest? Well, that's what we'll cover in the next section. So when it comes to the X4, I think we can all agree that recording in 8K is about as demanding as it gets. And it's certainly a mode where you need to anticipate the possibility of overheating. But is it the only mode where overheating is a concern? Well, I set up some tests in order to try to answer exactly that question. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, when I did my battery life testing, I did have a couple of instances where the camera stopped recording and shut down due to overheating, not due to the battery being depleted, and those were all while using the 8K mode. But I do have to say that for the most part, even recording at 8K, Typically, I depleted the battery without any overheating problems. Now, it's important to add that my tests were done in a relatively cool environment. Yes, it was indoors with minimal airflow, but the ambient temperature was around about 70 degrees Fahrenheit or around 21 degrees Celsius. So I guess in my testing environment, when I was recording for extended durations in 8K, I was pretty much on the borderline of temperature between shutting down and continuing to operate. So I wanted to find out what is that temperature and how close do the other modes come to that temperature. 
Now, of course, I have no way of measuring the internal temperature of the camera, so the next best thing I thought was to measure the surface temperature. And I found that this area here between the logo and the recording lamp was about the hottest it got. So I put together a test setup with a surface thermometer pointing at exactly this point between the logo and the recording lamp in order to measure the surface temperature throughout the run. Now this is what the results look like for a run at 8K. Now keep in mind this was a run which did not shut down due to overheating, but only shut down when the battery was completely depleted. And as you can see, in this instance, the surface temperature at that hot spot I mentioned reached around about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So in this particular run, we didn't suffer any shutdown issues due to overheating, but I think it's clear that if you're recording for an extended period in 8K, you're going to be getting close. So the next thing I wanted to do is see how close the other recording modes come to these temperatures. And here you can see the consolidated results from those tests. Now the dark blue line at the top is the 8K test, and as you would expect, that resulted in the highest temperatures. But there are also two modes where the temperature came pretty close. The first is 4K at 100 frames per second, which really isn't that surprising because, like 8K, this is another mode which records at 200 megabits per second. The more surprising result here is the dark green line, which is the 5.7K plus mode. It's surprising because this mode only records at 130 megabits per second, and also one of the main reasons for this mode is to allow you to record in a quality that's close to 8K, but without the risk of overheating as you would have with 8K. Now, yes, the temperature is lower in 5.7K+, but not by much. The purple line is the free frame 4K 30 frames per second mode, which is a 160 megabit per second mode, but as you can see results in relatively low temperatures of just 127 degrees. And another surprising result here is the light blue line, which is the 5.7K 60 frames per second test. Now, like 8K and 4K 100, this is another 200 megabit per second mode, so I was a bit surprised to see the relatively low temperature here. And finally, the green line you can see is the 5.7K30 line, which as you can see is very low temperatures, and you could basically continue recording until you run out of memory. So far then, we have identified that there are three recording modes where overheating could potentially be an issue. We have, of course, 8K, we also have the 4K 100 frames per second mode, and surprisingly, we also have the 5.7K plus mode. So for the next test, what I did was I hooked up a power bank in order to do an extended duration run of each of these three modes. Now, an important note here is that because I have the power bank hooked up, it will be continuously charging the X4's battery throughout the run, and that also will add to the heat generation. So, let's take a look at the results. Now, in this test, we did experience some shutdowns due to overheating. For the 8K test, we managed to make it 54 minutes before the temperature reached 149.7 degrees and shut down. And with the 5.7K plus test, we made it 62 minutes into the test, at which point we shut down at a temperature of 147.9. Now, interestingly, the 4K100 test was able to continue without shutting down. The temperature stabilized at around about 150 to 151 Fahrenheit. So, frankly, I think we just got a little bit lucky by this one not shutting down.
Now, one topic I also want to cover quickly is that of overheating during file transfer. Now, a number of viewers have commented that they are experiencing overheating or very high temperatures on the camera during file transfer, so I did run some tests on this. I tested both USB and Wi-Fi transfer. In the USB test, I transferred almost 100 gigabytes of files. It took a little bit less than 20 minutes, and during that time, the surface temperature only got to around 99 degrees, so really no issues with USB transfer. For the Wi-Fi test, I transferred around about 23 gigabytes to my phone using Wi-Fi. It took almost 13 minutes, and during that time, the surface temperature got up to around about 105 degrees Fahrenheit. So here too, I'm also not seeing any issues with overheating during file transfer. So clearly based on these results, if you're using one of those three modes, 8K, 4K 100, or 5.7K+, you will probably want to take extra precautions to try to avoid overheating. And do keep in mind that my tests were all done in relatively low temperatures, around about 70 Fahrenheit. Obviously, if you are recording outside on a sunny day in 90 degree temperatures, then you'll need to be even more prepared. So what are some of the things that we can do in order to avoid overheating or at least minimize the probability of overheating? Now, one of the most effective ways of cooling the camera is by airflow. So try to ensure airflow around your camera. If necessary, maybe even consider using something like a fan to gently move the air over the surface of the camera. Secondly, don't underestimate direct sunlight, even if it's a relatively cool day. The camera body is black and it will absorb sunlight very quickly, so you may also want to consider somehow shading your camera. Third, maybe just plan for shorter duration recordings. So record for a shorter period of time and then allow a little bit of cool down time before starting the next clip. Now, when it comes to cooling down, if you do experience a shutdown due to overheating or get anywhere close to those temperatures, you will need to figure at least 20 to 30 minutes to cool down to a normal temperature. And one way that you can assist the cool down process is actually by removing the battery. This will not only take away the heat from the battery itself, but should also increase the airflow around the camera. And while on this subject, if you are planning to do an extended run with a power bank attached, you may want to consider actually removing the battery and just running the power through the power bank. Again, this will avoid the added temperature coming from the battery itself and should assist with airflow, but be sure to only use this in an environment where you are sure you're not going to get dust or moisture entering the camera. Fourthly, try to avoid gripping the camera too tightly. Now, typically with a 360 camera, this should not be an issue because you're normally using it on a selfie stick or some other kind of mount to avoid having your hand in the camera. And that brings me to the subject of this guy, the Thermo Grip Cover. Now, according to the product page on the Insta360 website, it says this will reduce the surface temperature of the X4, making it more comfortable to hold. But if you check out the support pages of the Insta360 website, you'll find a section on the Thermo Grip cover, and it tells you specifically it does not reduce the temperature of the camera, it simply reduces the temperature you feel if you're holding the camera. So I'm a little confused about this thing because I really don't know anybody who films 360 by holding the camera in their hand. But in any event, if you're filming for extended periods, I would definitely recommend not installing the Thermo Grip cover. So how big an issue is overheating on the X4? Well, frankly, I would say it's not really an issue, it's just a reality that you have to face when you are recording in very demanding conditions on what is a very compact and watertight device. But 
clearly overheating is something we need to be aware of, and also it can occur not just when you're filming in 8K, but also when you're filming in 4K 100, or even the 5.7K plus mode for extended periods. That being said, unless you are working in very extreme environments, you should be able to record problem-free for 30 to 40 minutes just by using the battery alone. Obviously, if you are using a power bank or AC power, you are likely to experience overheating faster. So that about wraps it up for our video on overheating. I hope you were able to get good information out of this. If so, please remember to give us a like and also consider subscribing to the channel for a lot more content on Insta360, DJI and a whole lot more. Thank you for watching.